Hello ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back. We're now going to be starting at section 2. Now there's an assumption that if you're watching this video that you have now finished the first draft of your user interface which means you've looked at your, your storyboards which is basically the sketches that you made for learning during learning game B and you've gone and made the actual UI um, using PowerPoint using the previous videos. Now if you have, that's fantastic. What we're going to do now is going to get some feedback. Now there's a number of ways. There's the old school way which is basically make some page, uh, questions, uh, type it up, print it out, hand it to some people, get the feedback and then type it and paste it in here. Now there's nothing wrong with doing that, you can do. But what I'm about to show you is I believe the easiest way because you can make the one survey you don't need to worry about um, printing things off, having not enough, not not having enough paper, ink, or you know, printing credits to print off the, uh, print this off, and you can send it uh, with a click of a button to a number of different people uh, from different uh, backgrounds and categories, um, uh, genders, and so on and so forth. So first things first, let's look at um, what we mean by Google Forms. Now, bear with me and forgive me if you know and you've used Google for Google Forms before. If you have, you can skip this step and go straight to thinking about the kind of questions you should be asking. If you've never used Google Forms before, uh, let me show you how it's done. Now, obviously, there's an assumption that you're going to have to have a Google account. Uh, if you were, if you are a student from my school, then of course you will have been given a an Academy Google Mail account. Once you've logged in, you should be able to see this here. Uh, but go to the icons, uh, the app icon here, and look for uh, Google forms there it is forms now when you open this up it should give you a blank um, form now I'm not gonna go through everything here uh, because there's a risk there's a risk that the kind of questions that I think of um, you're gonna basically just copy and say oh that's that's all that Mr. Ali said that's all I need to do and that's not the case what I will instead do is uh, show you how this is done in terms of um, the, the the form itself how you make this online form um, how to create ki different kinds of questions and how to send it off. But it's up to you then to or, or think about what kind of questions you will have on your form before actually sending it out to people. So first things first, it'll be a good idea to create a, a name, a title for this form. So you're going to say new UI uh, user, oops, user feedback form. Okay, simple. First question. Now, if you go back here, you'll see that I actually have a few things for you to think about. Um, and then what, what might be a good idea to, uh, to do is to make a list of these questions beforehand before going on to here. As I said, I don't want to give you all of these questions because then you'll all end up having the same kind of questions and then there's an issue of plagiarism there. The examiner might say, okay, you've been given far too much help um, and that obviously you want to avoid, it won't be fair. So sometimes it's best to uh, for me to give you less and just give you some hints and then for you to then come up with your own ideas. And I'll tell you what areas to focus on and that way you have a differentiating factor because at the end of the day, some of you will deserve to get the top marks because you've got to that point yourself and others you know if you need you know spoon feeding and, 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 and babysitting then I'm sorry to say you don't deserve it so you do need to put a bit of effort in here and think uh, for yourselves so you need to think about some questions so if you look at step two uh, what kind of questions could we ask them you want to get information from them you want to know what they think about your new UI now of course I've got mine here which isn't obviously finished it's just an example uh, of what it could look like and the aim is to basically say, okay, I'm going to take this back to drawers and medical practice, the manager's there, and I want to say to them, look, here's my final product. This is what I think uh, you need, and I'm, I'm saying this not because of my own opinions, but because of other people's opinions as well. Now, I can't just give it to them as it is because I don't know what people have said. I haven't asked them yet. So you need to ask you know, people, other than yourself, from different backgrounds, what their opinion is on the UI itself. But you know, I don't want you, I don't want to, I don't want to see anyone fall into the trap that most people will fall into, which is ask questions about the way it looks, because that's just one element. Yes, you're gonna talk about ask questions about what they think about the colour scheme, is it professional, does it match, is it consistent, do they like it? Is it, you know, and, and so on and so forth. And talking about the background styles, talking about the colour in general, talking about the written instructions. Are there enough instructions there? Or does it even need instructions? Sometimes, actually, some of you may find that you've given too much instructions. How easy is it to use? How easy is it to navigate? 
Can they read it? That's what legibility means. Can they read it? Is there good contrast? Yes or no? Is there enough icons? Too much icons? Uh, logos, are the use of logos appropriate in this? Is it needed? The use of images, is there enough? What do they think of it? Is it good quality, good size, uh, and so on and so forth? So you want to think about as many questions as you can on these topics and these points. Then there needs to be at least one question where you're asking them what they think should be changed and why. What could be done to improve your UI and why? Okay, so one of the last questions you need to ask in your form is, how else would you like this UI to be changed and why? How could this change help you as a user? Something on those lines. Then the aim is, as a bare minimum, to get three people to answer it. So I'm going to give you a little tip first, though. So I'm going to do the first part just to give you one, uh, uh, an idea. Now, what would be good is we don't need to know the, who, who the person is, so we don't need to know the name uh, or anything like that. But what would, might be a good idea is to basically ask uh, some general questions to see what kind of categories they belong to. So, for example, um, gender. Quest, uh, put that, and then you could put male, female. Oh, if I click properly, female. There we go. Um, and then you go and ask another question, okay? And now you will see there's a, a required button here because if you don't want anyone to skip your question, you click on required. That way it means it forces the person to at least give an answer here. To add another question, you click here. And then you could type it in something like, how old are you? Now, you could just keep this as simple as a short answer. So they type in how old they are. Or what might be better to do is to have a um, multiple choice and you can put child and you can put the age. So we could say, um, let's be realistic, maybe a seven year old could use it up to say 11, no, 12, teenager. And this is just an example, guys. You know, I don't want everyone to do exactly the same thing. Teenagers, so we say 13 to 19. Oop. There we go. And we can say adult. We can say 20 to say, I don't know. Let's put young adult, actually. Young adult. 20 to... What should we say? 30? Yeah. Then we could put adult 31 to say 55. And then we could put um, senior or something like that. 56 plus. Okay. So they get to choose what category they belong to. Now, what we're trying to do before we ask any questions uh, on what they think about the, 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 the UI, it'd be a good idea to get a variation of different people. And the only way you're going to do that is if we can ask these questions first. So, you know, have you got enough male people answering and female people asking? Have you got enough you know, people from the teenage bracket, young adult, adult, senior bracket? Then you need to ask things like um, um, ethnic minority. No, uh, ethnicity, sorry. Ethnicity. T if I could spell um, and you could put now if you struggle with this one because there's so many different variations you can get go to Google excuse me and just type in ethnicity there we go and look for some examples from here UK. There we go. Let's click on this one. And um, we don't need every single one. Uh, just pick the ones that are most uh, likely. And it will be obviously the more you have, the better it is. Um, and here we go. So let's we go down. Let's see if we can find it quickly without wasting any more time. Too much time. There we go. So white, mixed, Asian, black. 
other ethnic groups. So we could just copy and paste some of these. So we could put white. What might be better is if I actually drag this out. Not you, sorry. I meant this one. And have it side by side. So we've got white, English, white, Irish, um, white other. Let's go for mixed, um, white and black. No, let's put just, let's keep it simple, mixed. Mixed race. Um, now I can't put every single one of these down because this video will be too long. But obviously you're going to be a bit more, um, you know, you'll have more time. Think about the ones you can put in there, should put in there, because it's going to give you extra marks. So uh, obviously when you have Asian here, you're going to want all of them. So you can Asian Indian. You can have Asian uh, Pakistani. Asian Bangladeshi, Bangladeshi, um, Asian Chinese, and let's put Asian other, and we could put black African. Black, um, oh god, just need to delete that space there. There we go. Um, black, African, Caribbean, notice how you can have as many options as you want. Black. Other, yeah, and so on and so forth. Okay, make sure you say required there as well. Then you can add other questions uh, that will be important to ask, uh, asking about you know um, special needs. Um, so, for example, you might need to write down, "Do you have any um, accessibility needs?" If I can spell. There we go. Um, and they give you suggestions. But I'm going to choose my own. So no visual hearing motor. Other, and there we go, done, required. No visual hearing motor, other, press that, done. Next one. And you can say, if you're, if you answered yes to the previous question, please explain. So it would be good to get, and notice how this one's automatically put paragraph because I said the word explain, which is fine, um, and put that there. Now, so far, I'm just trying to figure out who is the person answering these questions. So I want to know if they're male or female. I want to know what age group they belong to. I want to know what ethnicity uh, ethnicity uh, they, uh, they uh, belong to, what category they belong to. And the reason for these is because, obviously, if they've got a different language, uh, as a second, you know, a second uh, language, how easy is my user interface? You know, if they speak another language, I just noticed I spelled that wrong. If they have a different language, I, I'd be interested to know whether they find it easy to easy to use my user interface or not, and how easy or how difficult it is, male and female. If there's any difference there, 
age group if there's any difference there and the, the most important one really accessibility needs so notice how i'm trying to get a feel of who the person is we don't need to know the name or where they live or anything like that we don't need to be able to go back to them so we don't need their contact details or such it's just the categories that they belong to so it's pretty anonymous still um and at this point then we can start asking questions about the ui itself so we can go back to the prompts that i've given you in the actual task itself here you can see asking about color schemes background styles color uh with the writing written instructions how easy it is to use how easy it is to navigate and use these prompts to start thinking about the questions so First one, you can say something like, let's have a, another one here. Oh, I just noticed something. Let's delete this. There it is. And you go right to the bottom, click on it, and make sure I put plus sign so it goes underneath. There we go. And then we can start asking questions about the user interface. What do you think? No. Let's put down... Um, does the chosen color scheme of the new UI, let's put the full words actually, user interface, because not everyone knows what UI stands for, user interface, um, look professional. Let's keep it simple. Does the color scheme of the new new user interface look professional? Uh, yes, no, at all. There we go. Yes, no, sometimes. Okay. Another question. What else can we have? Let's have a look. Um, written instructions. Uh, no. Is the new interface easy to use one equals very hard to use five equals very easy to use okay nice and simple required have I put required in this one? I'm not sure. Let's have a look. No, there we go. Let's go back down. Add another one. Um, again, let's prompt ourselves. What, have I, what else have I mentioned? Uh, mentioned? Written instructions. Are there any written instructions in the new user interface? There we go. Required. So you just want to start building these up. Think of as many as you can, uh, talking about the way it looks, the way it feels, the way it uh, um, works, uh, how easy is it to read, how easy is it to see things, to click on things. And you can even ask questions like, you know, do you believe the buttons are large enough or too, too large or too small? Do you believe there's enough options? Do you, and be more specific, obviously in this situation, we're talking about doctor surgery, so you can ask questions like, do you believe uh, it's easy to make a new appointment here? Or does the new UI or user interface make it easy for you to cancel an appointment? Explain your answer. Now, as soon as you've done all these questions, and I can imagine, you know, you're going to have maybe 15 or 20 questions. I've got at least, you know, seven, eight here already. And I'm not, I've, you know, I'm nowhere near close to even going, coming halfway through. Um, you need to finish off with a question that's asking them about suggested improvements. So uh, what, in fact, let's be a bit more clever here because we know later on we're going to start talking about strengths or weaknesses. So you can ask questions like um, what, um, do you like about the new UI user interface? Done. And that will help you with one of the answers. And now the suggestion. So, um, how please let's ask them nicely. Please um, identify at least one item 
that could be changed in the new user interface and explain how this would help the overall experience there we go and this is a power graph as well and we're going to put it required now as i said you're going to have a ton more questions in between but this is just an example of how it would look once it's done the beauty of this is that it does save automatically. If I click here, it should transfer the form name up here as well. And when you're ready, you'll notice that when you click, there's a response in the question section. This is the question where, of course, where you design your questions. When you click on responses, you'll see all the answers for each question. Of course, right now it says zero because I've not sent it to anyone yet. So when you're ready, you click on send and you type in the people's emails. So of course, as a bare minimum, you're going to pick two or three people from your class. But what would be useful is if you can also send it to a number of different people. Now, the problem now is this. If you send this to people, the first question they're, asking, they're going to ask themselves is, what UI? They haven't seen it yet. So what would be useful is, if I go back here, is to include the, the PowerPoint on here um, as a picture. So you can click here. Actually, I'm just wondering if there's a quicker way. What might be easier is, of course, if you can actually show them their working interactive UI. Uh, and the best way to do that is obviously to save it as a pen drive, uh, in a pen drive, take it home and open it on a computer or a laptop or even a tablet, uh, put it on presentation view and actually let the person play around with it. Um, if that's not possible, then what you could do is just save each one of these pages as a picture. Yeah. Um, paste it in here and you'll see there's a picture button here so you can add image and you can just paste it in here um, you can take a snapshot right now if you want to do so the easiest way might be just click or take a snapshot um, I think this is right let's have a look Let's have a look, let's try this again. This might work, it might not, but at the end of the day, there are a number of ways you can do it. So let's see if a snapshot works. Okay, no, this is to take a photo. So what we'll do instead is we're gonna go um, perhaps the easiest way would be to go to Google Drive and if you saved it in Google Drive uh, you can basically uh, paste it in there or let's have a look another way another way there we go you can drag it in here now the best way I reckon is I, I to, be, to be honest rather than having individual um, pictures because like I said I've only got four here but I estimated I'm going to have like maybe 12, 13, maybe even 15 slides um, so rather than 15 different pictures it'll be easier to save it as a actual PowerPoint as it is right now and then show it to the person uh, and let them then um, give you feedback on it so that's the way I would personally do it um, I'm just wondering whether you can attach this video no no, you can't, unfortunately. So what you'll have to do is let them see the user interface first and then send them this actual form. So once they've seen it, and it's up to you how you do it, whether you put it on a pen drive, whether you save it on, uh, send it as an attachment on an email address. Yeah, you could send it on an email, send it to the people that you, you know, you're planning to send this form to. And of course, have a conversation beforehand and say, listen, I hope you can help me. This is a, for a piece of coursework for one of my GCSEs at school. Um, can you please have a look at this? This is the background. Uh, I've been asked to create a new user interface for a doctor's surgery. This is what, the, you know, surge the... Um, Patients would be typically used when they walk into the reception to sign in, to book a new appointment, to cancel appointments, and so on and so forth. Could you just tell me what you think about it? Um, right now, have a look at it, and then in a, in a, a very shortly, I'll be sending you a form. And then send the form. So as I said, when you're ready, you click on send, and you type in the email there, very simply. Um, 
And that's basically it. Once you're ready and you're happy, we just press send. And that's it, done. You could also get the email, so the link itself, like so. You can just copy, paste that. You can click on shorten it, shorten it for you, and then this may give you a short one. You can copy that and paste it in an email and send it out to people. However way you do it, just make sure you send it out to everyone. Now, you cannot proceed to the next section until you have these questions made, it's sent, and you've got some response from people. You cannot go and do the next section without this. And in fact, you lose major marks if you don't have this done. So hopefully you got an idea there now. Make sure you uh, make this, you know, this questionnaire, this form as comprehensive as you can, uh, and covering all aspects of the way your for, uh, your user interface looks. Keep this in mind. This is going to be very, very useful. Without this, uh, you're going to, you know, waffle on talking about things that may not even be important.